All right, today is the review class for test number one. So I begin with uh, the inverse, the derivative inverse problem. Okay, the first problem is if you are given a function f of x equals 1 plus 2x plus x cubed, and we want to find out the derivative, the inverse, the derivative inverse of the function at 4. All right, now, we are not able to find the inverse uh, formula for the inverse function, but we're still able to find the derivative. So the idea is, the idea is to use the formula. Okay, all we have to do is find the the value of the inverse function at that particular point. You don't need the formula; you just need the value of the function at that particular uh, number. So, okay, so how do you do that? Well, first of all, look at the function, right? The function, the derivative function is going to be 2 plus 3x squared. This is a clearly it's a, it's the increasing function, right? So this function always increasing. So, so the derivative exists. So don't, don't worry about that. And uh, just because it's more than 20 function, okay? But we cannot find uh, the formula for that. Uh, well, what we can tell is if f1 equals 1, right? Uh, when x equals 1, f1 is going to be 1 plus 2 times plus 1, so which is 4. That implies at least I can tell the value of the inverse at 4, which is going to be 1. That's all we need, okay? So if you are still not familiar with this, then then you will uh, have a trouble to find the, the, the derivative inverse at some particular number. All right, now all you need is a derivative function. Evaluate at the word. So it's two plus three times one square, which is going to one over five. That's all we need. All right, and uh, similarly you can do uh, other you know, problems. All right. My my next question is is the integral of of this type of function natural logarithmic dx okay and k is a uh, is a positive integer k is a positive integer okay. Uh, it's uh, it's probably not necessary to be strictly positive, but it cannot be negative one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me change this. Okay. It's any number which is not going to be negative one. Okay. So integral of that. It's hard to do with uh, natural log of x, but if you differentiate, right, then you will, yeah, if you differentiate, then you can get rid of that, you get a win of x, okay? We, we know that this is the important fact. This is gonna be win of x. Okay, we can deal with power functions, easy, but we cannot deal with natural log of x, so we have to get rid of that. Uh, to do that, Use the integration by parts. This will be, uh, no, it's not this is not, okay. You have to decide which one is u, which one is v, okay. So I have to change, uh, 
changes order of the two functions. This is will be u. When you du, it, you can differentiate, right? This will be dv. Okay. <coughs> so let's find out what is u. Right? U is already you know that's an intellectual of x. What is v? V dv going to x to the power k. So v is going to be uh, this, right? When you differentiate, you get x k x to the power k dx. So that's all you need. So you write down to uv minus v du, right? Then you get the only power function. So what is uh what is uh what is u? U is a natural log of x. What is v? Okay, minus <coughs> minus uh, v is k plus one here x to the power, and the du is one of x dx, right? That's a du. This is du part. All right. So now you simplify a little bit, and uh, okay. And here you get x plus one of k plus one, and x to the power k dx. But this is a uh, again, it's a power function. So the entire derivative of this function will be one over k plus one times x to the k plus one. So that's it. So this is the answer. Now question is, uh, question is how about when k equals what? When k equals negative one. So what is the natural log of, right? That's the case when k equals negative one, right? Then it's in the dynamic. Can you do this? That's my question. Then you can deal with all the functions. Then you can evaluate integral of all these type of functions x to the power k times the natural log of x. So this type of function is on the sample exam. That does not mean I will put exactly the same problem with that, okay? But you, you should know there is a problem using integration of parts, okay? I'll give you another type of function you can think about uh, when you have a time. Okay? For this type of function, when you see natural log, you have to differentiate, get rid of that, okay? So for this one, you cannot differentiate. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's hard to you know you can do that, then uh, then maybe how do you find the entire derivative when of x right? So, I think at this time I'm going to use a substitution. If I use substitution, then du equals when of x dx right? So this integral is u and du. Very simple, right? And which is going to be that. And then, then you get half of natural log of x squared. Okay. So, and a good exercise I want to do is x squared cosine x dx. Okay. Now, the difference here is I repress natural log of x by cosine x. But the idea would be totally, you know, still using integration of part. But you're not going to differentiate in cosine x. Uh, you cannot get rid of a cosine x because when you differentiate, you do not change the type of a function. At cosine becomes sine. Then you differentiate again, cosine becomes cosine. It's still there. It's not like the nature of x. When you differentiate, you get power functions with no x. Okay. So, so think about how to use the integration parts to solve the problem. I think the idea is to reduce the power of xk x squared, yeah, it then become x, then nothing. Then just integral cosine x, then you can evaluate, okay? Yeah, this is, I'm not gonna discuss this here in the class.
Our next problem is to find the derivative of f, f so e to the two cos x cosine uh, cosine x. Okay. All we have to learn about this is the derivative of e. You have to use a chain rule, right? We also should know that the derivative arc cosine x is going to be negative, right? I hope you remember this formula. Okay, so if you know this formula, then you can quickly uh, solve this problem. So the derivative uh, f prime x, just use a channel, you copy the function, then you differentiate the inside, which is going to be negative one square one minus x square. Okay, so that's it, it's just one step. Now, if I, if I give you another function, such like e to the sorry such as like a hyperbolic sign nature of x <clears throat> if i ask you to find the derivative of this type of function yeah you, you know you have to look at the function first are you able to simplify Okay, don't just go ahead to differentiate without looking the function. You can use a channel, no problem. Yeah, if you use a channel, this is going to be hyperbolic cosine x, natural log x, then you differentiate. This is the answer, okay, correct answer. Okay, that's fine. Right? Use a channel. But you can also look at the function from the definition of hyperbolic sine x, e to the natural x minus e to the negative natural log x, right? And you know that e and natural log, when they meet, they cancel out. So this will be, let's copy this. And then, right? So you will get the numerator will be x, then this will be that. Okay, so you get the sum of two power functions. Can you close the door? The back Too much noise. See? All right. So the derivative of that function is going to be just one, the first one, the second one is plus x to the negative two, right? That's it. So after you simplify the function, you can quickly differentiate, save you a lot of time too. Another typical example is so you look at the function first, okay? Uh, it's going to be like a, like a, like a natural log of square one plus x square, something like that, right? Now, if you don't simplify it, you have to do what you would have to do. You have to differentiate the, the square root of some function. It's very complicated, right? It's actually three, it's composite of three functions, okay? You know, this is going to be like a natural log of u, u is going to be square root w, w is going to be one plus x squared, now like, you know, then, then use a chain rule, right? I, I don't think it's a good idea to solve this problem. It's better to just uh, take one half out and that's much simpler, okay? Then you differentiate. So don't just, yeah, just directly solve the you know differential function. You have to look at the function whether you can change the form of the function. Then you differentiate. Then you get one of a one plus x and differentiate two x. You get uh, differentiate x will be two x. So the answer will be just this. All right. So this is about uh, the derivatives. So let's take a look at 
the next problem. Evaluate the integral of some type like a cosine cube x, cosine square x dx, something like that, right? It could be sine square and cosine square. But there are many types, you know, you have to you have to before you have to go over that before the test, right? If you suppose what happens with square square instead of sine cube, okay? So if one power is even, other one power is r, and the mass will be totally different. If both powers are, 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 are even, then there will be the mass will be different. Okay. So I'm getting, I pick up those two problems, and uh, let's discuss that. Okay. <clears throat> For the first one. The idea is just substitution. You can take sine x dx, okay? Don't use integration by parts. Some students apply integration parts to all the integrals, okay? It does not work, okay? Substitution. All right, so using that, okay, this is a not integration part, right? So you have to, how to get the sine x dx when u is uh, going to be cosine x? Or you can say negative cosine x. Yeah, doesn't matter. You can, okay? So let's put a negative cosine x, okay? If you use code negative cosine x, then du equals sine x dx. All right, then all the terms can be changed to u square because sine, sine square x is one minus cosine x. So, all right, and it's u is cosine x du, okay? So you get an integral polynomial, then you know how to do that, right? So it's gonna be u squared minus u to the fourth power. All right, then you replace u by negative cosine x. So which is gonna be negative one third cosine cube x. It's gonna be plus cosine to the fifth plus constant. Because U is going to be negative cosine x. Okay, so this is a uh, this is a uh, the method. But if uh, if I change the power, the sine square and cosine square, that be totally different uh, way to solve the problem. Okay, sine x cosine x. When you multiply them out, you get <coughs> sine half of sine two x. So it'd be sine x cosine x squared dx. Sine x cosine x can change it to one single function. So it's gonna be half, so it's quarter. Sine two x squared dx, right? Then one single function square can be changed to cosine, 4x. One minus double of this angle, cosine 4x dx. Okay. Yeah, sine, you see, remember, <coughs> sine square theta is the one minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Cosine square theta is one plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Okay. Right? To use a window. There, <laughs> the entire, yeah, this is gonna be eight. Uh, this will be x minus sine four x divided by four plus constant. This is answer. If we use as a method to solve the problem, you will still end up with similar answers, but maybe in different form. It's not like a sine 4x. Okay.
So the next problem is the value integral of x over x plus 1, x minus 2 dx. Right, to solve uh, this type of problems, you see you have to decompose the function into two simple forms. I just just uh, express it uh, as a part, as a sum of two, two reciprocals of linear factors, right? It's a plus one and b x minus two. Uh, and we wanted to use this method to solve the problem. Now, if you, you can wait until y to figure out what is a and what b, but I guarantee that's a and b then. So if you can do that, the integral is gonna be integral of this function, right? And plus the integral of this function, okay? Right? Then this is gonna be a natural log absolute x plus one, and b natural log x, okay? So that's a strategy to solve the problem. So write down the answer in this form first. When you have a time, come back to figure out A and B. <laughs> Don't stuck with the A and B and spend lots of time and, the, and give me wrong numbers. Okay, this is you most, you get maybe 80%, 70% of the credits already. And uh, we give only three points for, for this algebraic problem. Okay, this is, does not belong to calculus, right, this part. Algebra the problem, and what is A and B, right? So that this function is going to be some of these two factors. Okay, we can ask the high school kids to do that. This is the nicer uh, algebra problems problem here. Yeah. Determine the coefficients so that both sides are equal. So this is not a part of calculus. That's why reason I only give two or three points to that part. But you have to complete this part, you know, the remaining part, the integral of this type of function is going to be a times natural of x plus one, I was put up a absolute value, okay? This could be negative, okay? Then when you have a time, let's work on that. So x over x plus one, x minus two, and that is a x minus two, b x plus one okay then you compare both sides this a plus b x minus two a plus b right so clearly a plus b should be equal one negative two a plus b should be equal to zero and after you solve it you should double check okay so to solve these two equations, I do the subtraction. Equation one minus equation two. I get rid of B. So three A equals one minus zero is one. So A equals one third. Then I can get B. B is going to be one minus A, two thirds. Okay? So what they should do here? It's clearly what is A and B, you already told me, right? So you can put a note here where A is one third, B equals two thirds. I gave you four credits, right? All you have to do is put a note here where A equals one third, B equals two thirds, right? That's enough. Okay. And how'd I get that? Just a couple lines. Yeah, it's important to find for anything, you have to find a strategic play. Right when you when you get a problem, what is the best way to solve the problem? 
okay, and guaranteed to get maximum credits. Okay, if you know the idea how to do it, show me the idea. Don't just hide the idea and just work on the details, called technical details. And then when you're stuck there and you give up and move on to the next problem, you still haven't shown me the ideas, <laughs> right? And when at the end you find no time to go back to do the problem, so you just turn in the test. So tell me the ideas, yeah. Our next problem is determining whether a function uh, uh, is divergent or convergent. If it's convergent, find it. I think this type of function could be very general. Okay. This is a typical problem. For what value of p, this is divergent, uh, convergent, and uh, and if it's convergent. Uh, what is the limit? Okay. Now it's possible. I put. I put another uh, 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 function there, okay? This was on the sample test, but it's possible, I said that it's possible I put nature log x here, even, okay? Think about this problem, you're gonna get home. I'm not gonna do that problem. But it's possible like that, you know, I modify a little bit. The idea is you still know how to evaluate the integral of this type of function, okay? The key point to, to prove to do this problem to get the credits, even even you even you cannot complete, is you have to tell me this is going to be the limit as b goes to infinity, integral of this. Then you try to evaluate this integral. Then you take a limit. Next two steps. Okay, but you have to tell me why you have to find the evaluate integral, right? Because by definition, this convergence, this integral, improper integral is defined to be the limit of this integral of a finite interval. That's a key point, okay? So, so the entire, uh, the entire derivative of this is gonna be one minus p, x to the one minus p, and evaluate this. But be careful, when you highlight to this, I have to make sure p is not going to be one. Yeah, we assume that I have temporary p is not going to be one. Otherwise, I cannot use this power function because one minus p zero is this. When p equals one, this is a nature log of, yeah, let's put this, when p equals one, this will be nature log of a series of x, okay, if p equals one. Okay, in that case. So there are two possible uh, uh, expressions for the integral. Then you clearly the second one approaches infinity, right? This approaches infinity uh, when b getting larger and larger because nature of b again. But this one, yeah, take a look at this one. Uh, it's gonna be one minus b, b to the one minus p, uh, this is one, okay? So when you plug a one for x, you get this. So when this one has a limit, only when the one minus p is negative, okay? This one approaches negative one minus p if p is smaller than, p is greater than one, okay? And this approaches infinity if p is less than one, okay? So that's two parts of. Uh, yeah, why p greater than one? When p greater than one, one minus p is a power of a b. One minus p is a, is, a, is a negative. So that's why it goes to zero. So the first term is gone. Only the second term remains that it's a limit. So you combine all of them together, you find out when p is less than or equal to p, that is, a, uh, yeah, so you can combine them it's going to be two limit. One is p minus one if p is greater than one, okay? Otherwise, positive infinity if p is less than or equal to one because when p equals one, it's also equal to infinity. So that's it. So you find this answer. 
Yeah. But if you look at, yeah, you already get it. You determine the value P for which the, 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 the integral is converging. Okay. Now, yeah, P when P is greater than 1. You see, when P is greater than 1 here, yeah, when P is greater than 1, you have a limit. Okay. When P is greater than 1, uh, see, what is this part? When p is greater than one, this term approaches zero. Right? This term approaches zero when yeah, v minus p approaches zero as p goes to infinity if p is greater than one. So you want us to do both ways basically as L and x to p as l. Yeah. But you know, you are given a very specific problem, okay? Just like a P is like a two thirds, for example. But I, I give you the most general form, okay? So, uh, so if uh, if you if you have to look at this problem, then you have to deal with that, okay? It's diverging, okay? It's diverging. Okay, can you can you prove that? Okay, then. It's more almost no 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 impact on the on the on this like if it's three over two I think this is a finite but it's I'm not sure you can get a value it's finite okay it's converging we already learned how to evaluate integral this so you should be able to to figure out the value what is the value when it's converging okay it's a good exercise okay please do this. Okay, it's a homework, right? It's a homework at home. Okay, do it. <laughs> okay, so the next problem. Find uh, the exact length of the function uh, of the curve. It is given by two thirds x to the three over two, and x is between one and eight. Hi. Now, do I need to draw the graph? Maybe not necessary, but. It's it's better to find a starting point and a point, okay? So when x equals one, y is equal to two over three, right? When x equals uh, when x equals eight, what is y value? Eight to the three over two. I don't think you can get integer fractions, okay? If it's two over three, yes, but three over two, this is not. <laughs> Yeah, can we write some into fraction time uh, times uh, square root two? Let's do it, okay? So let's modify this. Okay, it's gonna be two over three, four times two, right? It's a good exercise. So it's gonna be two over three, four times three over two times two, to the three over two, three over two is one plus one half, okay? Yeah, four to the three over two is gonna be eight. Why? Because square over two, the square of four is gonna be two. So it's gonna be eight. That's a bit two. That's a square over two, okay? So the answer will be 32 over three is square over two. Yeah, you can express it in that form. But anyway, it's a number, right? It's larger than one. Okay, if you sketch as a graph, this is a positive, it goes like that, okay? You find the length of this piece. 32 over eight, three is gonna be, it's gonna be, yeah, times square three is gonna be larger than 10. This is a, it's definitely larger than 10. Because 32 over three is already larger than 10, square three is larger than one. Okay, 
So it's pretty high point over there. All right, find the arc lens. So what is uh, what do you ha what do you have to do the first step? The very first step is uh, the the lens should be the integral like this. This is the trivial formula. Then you have to decide which variable you're going to use. Since y equals f of x, it's better to use yeah to use the x variable x from one to eight and the one plus dy over dx then dx squared. Right. You have to learn. You have to memorize this formula for the dx. Right. There's a square there. Don't forget the square. Right. The reason there is a square there because you have this uh, Pythagorean theory. Here's dx. This is dy. That's ds. Okay. When we when this has has this formula, where is this formula from? This formula from let me repeat the formula. So you have a curve in the space. You you chop off all the pieces, right? At each tiny small piece, ds is this part, the ds. It's tangent. Uh, you draw the tangent line to the curve. That's the ds part. But the ds part coming from the change in the x variable, change in the y variable. That's why they have a tiny. Every point there is a tiny rect. Right a triangle there. Okay? So this is a dx, this is a dy. The so integral of a ds really means add all the lenses of the short pieces together. You get total length. That's the rough idea of the integrals. Okay? Then you can repress ds by square of dx square plus dy square. Then you take dx out, you get this. Okay? So now, it is going to be, yeah, you differentiate, you will get 2 thirds times 3 over 2 just gone. So just equal to x to 1 half squared dx. Okay. So you end up with an integral of 1 plus square x dx. Now, here's the point. How to evaluate this integral? I, you cannot find, look at the back, back side of the book to, to figure it out. Okay. There are many, yeah, you have to use a uh, trigonometric substitution. Remember, for the test, for this particular test, you have to have used trigonometric substitution somewhere. Okay. You can avoid that. Okay. All the methods will be used okay, on the test. Integration of parts may be only used in one place or two. That's it. You cannot use that for all the problems. Okay. Substitution, special substitution, like a trigonometric substitution. If it's not a separate problem, maybe hidden somewhere, <laughs> like is this find the length of the of the curve. Okay. So I know this will be secant square say, right? So maybe try this. <laughs> Yeah, this is a pretty natural idea. So x is going to be tangent theta, right? Then dx is going to be tangent theta, secant theta, d theta. Okay. Okay, so the integral of this is going to be square root of 1 plus theta. Why can't you even think of 1 plus theta? Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. I know, but why do you even bother? Well, there's a section. There, there is a section about the trigonometric substitution. So they show you, okay, in order to get rid of the radicals, you have to, you have to write it as the one uh, something square. Okay, one plus x square is not something square. But if the x is Replaced by tangent the theta, then and we know the formula. Okay, so we know these formulas. So it's going to be uh, this is going to be uh, this form. So one plus tangent square theta is going to be secant square theta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Square. Yeah. So the idea is to get rid of the square root. Yeah. How to get square root? You have to make sure it's expressed as something square inside square root. 
So then you can get rid of square. Yes. Um, isn't it just one plus x? Isn't x oh. one x squared just x? You're right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry, I copy wrong. <laughs> yeah. If it's a square one plus x squared, then use the trigonal substitution. Now this time you don't need it. That's you're right. That's my mistakes, okay? Yeah, but we will somewhere. We have to use a trigonometric substitution, okay? Yeah, if you get square one plus x square. Yeah, you have many eyes watching, so you can see that. <laughs> yeah, it's possible you make a mistake like what I did, right? You, you, you put a square, then you substitute, trigonometric substitution. It's very hard to find the mistakes, honestly. Even you have a time you go up, go back to look at, okay? It's not easy to find. Oops, then you come out to, you know, oh, I'm very good. Why I, I don't get an A plus? <laughs> All right. So, so now this substitution will be very, very simple. It's one plus X, okay? And then DU equals and DX. And X, when X equals one, that's two. When X equals uh, uh, eight, that's gonna be nine. And to you to the one half the u, okay? Yeah, that's much simpler substitution. So it's going to be uh, uh, u to the three over two, then b three over two here, and three over nine. Right. I you can simplify a little bit. The first term will be twenty seven. The second term is two square over two. That's all you can write. It's a it's a it's a it's a number, right? It's a nice number. Yeah, indeed that we have we we may have in, integrals like that. I evaluate this type of integral. Okay? It, it, you will see one plus square inside the red square root. Okay. So there are there at least there are two formulas give you a square. You know, one plus Tangent theta equals secant square theta, right? Another one I think is one plus hyperbolic even. Science at uh, sine, I'm not going to use sine t equals hyperbolic cosine. It's possible, you know, this also gives us, okay? So there are two types of identities one plus something square equals another square, right? Okay, but uh, I, I will try to use the substitution, the trigonometric substitution. Okay, du equals uh, 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 tangent theta, secant theta, d theta. Okay, let's put into the integral x square. Oh, uh, this is x, not that, yeah, dx. So x squared is going to be tangent to square theta. One plus uh, tangent square theta is going to be secant square theta. So it's a secant square theta. Then dx is going to be tangent theta, secant theta, d theta, OK? So at least you can cancel. There is no square here, OK? Yeah, secant theta only. So secant theta has canceled out, and you will get only the integral here, one over tangent theta. But one over tangent theta is cotangent theta, right? It's cotangent theta actually is cosine theta over sine theta, d theta. And uh, then use a substitution again. This is a, just simply can write sine theta. Okay, and uh, put up a pseudo value here plus constant. When you differentiate, 
you get sine theta goes to the denominator and cosine theta on unit. I, I skip one step here. This can be you can you can you can you can solve the problem using substitution. Okay. Right. But then you have to uh, express uh, uh, sine theta in terms of a tangent square theta. Okay. So how do you do that? Right. I know. 1 plus x squared equals secant square theta, right? Which is 1 over cosine square theta. So I can get cosine square theta as 1. Then from here, I can find the sine square theta. Then I got x squared of that. Okay? Then absolute value of sine theta, you just take absolute value of this. So, so, uh, so the answer here will be that it's absolute value sine theta, right? Plus C. So it's going to be absolute, absolute value is the square root of this. Okay, so that will be done. Yeah, because sine square of theta is going to be x square plus one plus x square. So you take a square root of that. All right, so we got uh, we got this answer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the dx, you know, you cancel. Yeah, you cancel theta. You also cancel. Oops. <clears throat> so after you simplify, you can only get a cotangent theta. Then evaluate the cotangent theta using substitution or just write down the Kenta derivative directly. Okay. <clears throat> then at the end, they have to change it back to the x Okay. Right. So now we are we'll focus on two problems from section 8.2. Two and eight point three. Okay. This is a we are going to. I'm not going to evaluate integral. So just set up an integral. But the problem on the test, maybe you have to evaluate the integral. Okay, find the exact area. So set up an integral for the surface. Okay. Obtain by rotating the curve y equals x cubed x between zero and one by one about the x axis two about the y axis okay three about the x axis about the horizontal line x x equals one, okay? And I can also ask it to write down for about the line y equals one or y equals two, doesn't matter, right? Y equals, uh, uh, y equals negative, let me try this. All right, so if you're able to do, actually for each of the integral, you can have either use the x variable, you can use y variable. So multiple, you, have, you can write down, for eight integrals for those four questions. Okay, if you're able to do that, then you're super good on this section. Okay, so try to complete the first two. I'll give you a couple minutes to draw the picture. You can use any variable, but probably x variable. 
using the x variable method. Yeah. Let's say using the x variable. How about this? And also the second one, also I want to use the x variable. Step one, you must draw the picture, the 3D picture. Step two, for each problem, you must indicate on the picture the radius and associate with the point you choose on the curve. Yeah, the second problem is a little bit more difficult than the first one. The first one, some students just memorize a very specific formula from the book and uh, without even understanding the formula of that, can still get it right into it. But I want you to draw the picture and uh, So this is a point. You have to draw the picture and make sure the radius R. So you put R where it's going to be Y, okay? You are the universal formula is the area is going to be integral of 2 pi R dx, okay? You needed to repress. Uh, in the DS is always going to be DX squared plus DY squared. Then it depends on what variable we're going to use. Use the X variable, take the DX out, right? So 2 pi x is from 0 to 1, and, uh, and this is y, right? 1 plus, you can, without the machine, you know, the variable. And you have to take uh, x out, OK? So this will be, let me erase this. Yeah, otherwise, I cannot put the 0, 1 there, OK? So the variable, we already know that we're going to use the variable x. So that's the first formula you have to show. And the y is going to be x cubed, right? You have to express then. That's 1 plus 3y squared dx. Now, this is the integral. It's integral using x variable. Okay. Second. It's about rotation about y axis. Okay. So the highest point here is one. Now you can use the y variable to solve this problem. But I want to still use the x variable. Yes. Um, this is something uh, yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I have to join the bus. <laughs> I want this is part of the solution. I just don't want to see you put the integral there without doing anything. You have to tell me how to get this integral. You can say, Oh, I memorized the formula from the book. But it's possible I'm not going to give you a problem. You cannot just apply the formula directly. Okay, you have to for 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 this type of problems, you do need to know how to draw the graph, how to set up integral step by step, okay? From this uh, from this uh, universe form of 2 pi RTS, okay? Integral this, okay? Otherwise, more than 50% chance you get the wrong answer, wrong formula, okay? Like this one, right? I want to specify, I want to use X variable. Okay, first of all, you don't care about this, right? So you mark it, this is the radius, because it's rotation about the y-axis, right? It's about y-axis, yeah. All right, so according to our formula, uh, when the point x, y moves from here to here, so the x variable still runs from yeah. one, zero mm -hmm. to one, right? So that's your x variable. So the integral, Area is going to be two pi r ds, and that's l means the length of the of curve. But we don't know that. We don't need to know that. Okay, it's two pi. So what i is going to be x here, right? And the ds is going to be if we take x out, it will be still dy over dx. Okay. So then it will be x one plus dy over dx square dx. Okay. Now, if uh, if you if you just memorize this very specific formula from the book, fifty percent chance you put put you will you put a function f of x there. Okay. I, I can say that f of x because that's what they see the formula in the book. Okay. But the f of x here represents the radius because the radius is going to be x, not f of x. So actually, this should be r, not f of x. And if r is x, then x, right? So that's it. And uh, and this is going to be 3x squared and squared dx. Okay. So look at the difference between those two the integrals. On the top, it's x squared. At the bottom, it's just x. That, re that represents the area of a two different, completely different surface. So you don't have to solve for x or anything to put it in the equation. You just do it like that. Yeah, just the integral. But if we have to use the y variable for this problem, then what I have to do is, I have to determine the y value okay, if it's between zero and one. So the area is going to be the integral from zero to one, two pi rx, and then dx over dy squared plus one dy, okay? Got it? It's the same. But then x is not y, so I have to change to y value, okay? And uh, so x is going to be y to the one third, right? So then you put everything here, y to the one third, and that differentiate y to the one third, uh, negative two thirds, like one minus this one third, yeah, uh, uh, negative two thirds square plus one dy. Okay, so this integral, you see, much more complicated than the previous one. But if you use a maple or other software on computer, you can quickly check it out. You have the same value, same value. But they all come from the same formula, two pi r ds. Yes. yes. No, I just ask you one of the questions. I have. I give you four questions here. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going to ask you. Yeah, to give me two different versions of integrals. You give me one of them. That's enough. But uh, but you decide. You have to understand each term in the in the integral. Okay. But so I just ask you to memorize two pi RDS. I'm not, I never give a very special formula. In the, the formula in the book, it says that 
if the curve is rotated about the x-axis, then here's the integral like 2 pi f of x plus square root of f prime. Okay? You have to spend this, that's a special case. Okay, but you don't use that to, to, for every problem because the curve maybe is not rotated about the x-axis, but it's given by like a y equals f of x, but it's rotated about the y-axis and you can apply that formula. Okay, even like, like, like this case, right? You know, y equals x cubed, but this one is low, the curve is located about y axis, not about x axis. Okay, so now let's look at the different problem. Uh, uh, location is about x equals one. So let's take a look at this x equals one is here. So the graph is totally like that, totally different, right? This is x equals one. So take an arbitrary point here, x and y. This time the radius is this part, the radius is here, r. All right, so radius is r. So when the point, yeah, this should be the point around the curve. When the point from move from one end to another end, x changes from zero to one. And the radius also changes. What is the radius? Radius is going to be one minus x, be careful. 1 minus x is the difference between 1 and x. Okay. That's why I ask you to, to indicate the radius. And then ds is still equal to, because if you want to use the x variable, it's du, right? Then dx over there. Okay. Y depends on x, it's given. Y is going to be x cubed. Okay. So the area still the same formula, two pi r ds, right? So we are going, everything depends on x. X is changing from zero to one, two pi, and i is going to one minus x, dx is this, and what is the y? Y is three, uh, x cubed, then differentiate, you get this. All right, so that's small change, all right? That's a small difference. <clears throat> so the third one is the low ten about y equals negative one. The fourth one. Okay. Y equals negative one is here. How can I rotate? It's going to be like that. All right? Okay, choose a point on the curve and you draw the radius. The radius I is here. So you have to tell me what is the R. This time, I is going to be expressed in terms of coordinates. Right? I is going to be y minus negative one to actually y plus one. Okay? I is going to be y plus one. The distance between those two, you can tell, right? That's all you needed to know. ds is still going to be one plus dy over dx square and dx. Okay? Just the same. That's all I needed, right? Then the formula. It's integral from zero to L two pi r ds. Then I change it to the x variable. X variable still from zero to one, two pi y plus one and square root one plus uh, uh, of this. Then you replace y. What is y? Right? Y equals x cubed. So you plus two pi x cubed plus one. And, the, and here, x and y are the coordinates point on the curve. Right? Square root of 1 plus 3x square square dx. Okay? So please go over those problems when you get home and really should understand how do we set up this. Okay? And, uh, and draw the picture.
Now, students, yes, and knowledge, yeah, you can test how much knowledge do you have. Uh, extremely good, excellent means if I modify the function, you still can get A on this test, okay? I do not change the problem. I change the, like an X cubed becomes X to the fifth, for example, right? You still can do that. And the good student means I give exactly the same problem, just what I did in the class. Can you repeat it? <laughs> give you one hour, 15 minutes. If you can still complete all the problem, okay? You cannot say I forget, because if I understand, you will not forget, right? If you're not doing well, that means if you're giving exactly the same problems, you cannot still recover it, okay? Because you don't understand what's going on here. So when you go over the, for the test, you don't look at my solution, just look at the problems that I discussed in the class, okay? Are you able to recover, you know, completely? Okay, if not, you spend a little bit more time on these type of problems. Okay, you don't need to go over all the problems. Okay, and there are plenty of problems in the exercise. Okay, uh, uh, in the book. All right, the so last problem to find the centroid of the region. Okay. okay. Bounded by y equals x, 2 minus x, x equals 0, and x equals 2, and the y equals 0. Okay, there's four curves here. So what, what's going on here is you draw, draw the graph, okay? And, and this is a curve up is downward, okay? And x equals zero is here, x equals two equals here. And y equals zero, you see? I have to say y equals zero because yes, I draw the x axis, but that's invisible coordinate line. So the region, I have to say x, y equals zero, okay? So that is the region I'm talking about, okay? Now, before, yeah, you write down two formulas, okay? Write down two formulas. What is x bar? x bar is the integral of the function, uh, uh, right? Because the original formula, remember, is going to be use of vertical line segments, right? That's x, right? So that, you know, you maybe memorize the specific, or maybe use the my formula, okay? So that's going to be the integral from zero to one ln x dx, okay? That's the integral here is x ln x dx, okay? Another one is still using the x variable, okay? And uh, here you have to change x to the cx, okay? What is cx? cx is the middle point, the y coordinate of the middle point. So the, this is the ln x. So here ln x is a function only, okay? C of x is gonna be half of f of x, okay, for this particular problem. Maybe it's bounded between two curves, then be careful about ln x, okay? So I'll give you the most general formula, but let's, let's put the details here. That's integral here is x two minus x dx. Before you do any calculation, you, you should write down the two formulas, okay? Well, then if we have a time, then you do the calculation, okay? It's gonna be x two minus x squared. So, so this formula is most, yeah, this integral is most complicated. But when you look at this, I think you can save time. By the symmetry of the graph, you know that x bar must be equal one by symmetry. Okay? This is graph, this is parabola, parabola is symmetric. So you don't need probably waste time to work on the, the way on the left hand side for x bar. 
All you have to do is just evaluate the y to find the integral of y. Okay. Yeah. It must be on the axis of parabola. That's a symmetry. Okay. So, so let's look at the area. So this is going to be the area. And uh, it's 2x minus x squared dx. The entire derivative is x squared minus 1 third x cubed. Okay. And I got 2 squared minus 1 third 2 cubed. Okay. So it's going to be 12 minus 8 is 4. 4 over 3. Okay. So that's the area. So when you get the answer, you look at, okay, it's so reasonable, right? Does it make sense? Yes, okay. Then I needed to work out the numerator. It's going to be x2 minus x squared squared dx, right? From zero to two. So it's a little bit complicated, but we can do that. Right. It's going to be half of x squared and the multiply this out. 4 minus 4x four plus x squared dx. Not too bad, just polynomial degree 4. You multiply this out, 4x squared, 4x cubed plus x to the fourth power dx. Then you have three terms of an entire derivative. 4, 1 third x cubed, and x to the fourth power, 1 fifth x to the fifth. Okay, so question is how do you simplify this? Just plug two for uh, two cubed, two to the fifth, okay? Minus two to the fourth, plus one fifth, two to the fifth. Let's simplify this. We have to simplify this, okay? Two, the uh, one third plus one fifth uh, is going to be Three times four is three plus five is eight. Eight is two cube. Two cube. Okay. I think I can take two to the fourth power out. Two to the fourth power is sixteen. Minus fifteen is one. Okay, so it's going to be, after simplifying, it's going to be two cubed, three times five, eight over 15. All right, so that's the numerate, then the y bar is going to be eight over 15, and I think four over three. Then you simplify this, So cancel, and this is cancel. Okay, two over five. I think it's a reasonable. It should be less than a half. Uh, less than a, you look at this. Look, look at the picture, right? So what is the highest point? The y equals x over two minus x. When x equals one, when x equals one, here is one and the one, right? So parabola. The region, more area below, right? So, so this is one half. I think that the y bar should be less than one half. Should be below the middle point of that because more area below this middle line. Okay, this is one half, right? So when I look at the answer, okay, two fifths sounds reasonable. Then you stop. You don't need to waste time to calculate x bar. Okay. Because by symmetry, x bar is clearly is going to be one. This is a so the so center should be on the on the x axis uh, on this uh, axis of the parabola. Okay, you have to have a common sense when you work on some project that you should realize that there's mistakes. Okay, when you get the data, whatever you're doing, you know, we experiment or whatever. If sometimes computer gives you the wrong computation, you know, you enter wrong formula and come out to the wrong, complete wrong data, 
can I continue work on that? You should find out, okay, if this is wrong. So when you get the answer, you look at the picture, it's reasonable, then stop it. Otherwise, double check your work, okay? But the key point is to give me the formulas, how to use those formulas to find it. Yeah, you have to tell me you know how to do the problem, just to, uh, uh, make computation mistakes. So that's why you did not get the right answer. 